a very good afternoon today it's my real pleasure to be a part of this wonderful international conference being held in lahore of course virtually thanks to this dynamic and worse pandemic i would say the covid 19 has taken from us the life of meeting each other i my memories are very fond uh, a decade and half back when i was in lahore for the international conference i still remember professor afzal zawed and others from pakistan who had showed a lot of love and warmth for us and we really enjoyed that conference i would have loved to be in lahore today but i know the situation is not so conducive for us to travel across the world it's also my pleasure to thank dr nasir and the other organizing team from the pakistan psychiatric association for giving me this opportunity and i would thought that i would use this choice of topic the impact of technology in the mental health especially the human behavior how to evaluate and how to clinically practice i would start with a small story to start with i don't have any conflicts of interest to declare in this presentation i would start with this wonderful story which really happened in united states this is about bobbio the one you see in the screen here and bobbio was wearing that wonderful wearable device as you see on the screen here broken in the corner this screen and the app within as soon as bobbio had an accident incidentally bobbio is a 72 year old person in a geriatric home living alone and he had a fall in the bathroom thanks to the new mental health technology the emergency button because there was no movement for some time as he has fallen reached and within 18 minutes he was shifted to the emergency contact through the emergency contact and through the hospital and in the hospital he survived what a wonderful way nobody was there but this technology has helped him to reach the medical health care of course his contact people did reach to the hospital subsequently but by the time he was much better after a small surgery these kind of wonderful stories we hear around the world but there is also over the decade and half most of the doctors and especially the psychiatrists the question comes are we enslaved to the social media be it youtube be it instagram be it twitter be it snapshot and be it facebook each of these social media is helping us but are we enslaved to the social media is a big big question the way i wish to go today is to have the introduction of the newer mental health technologies with a brief history starting i would focus quite a lot a bit on the core mental health technologies over the time especially in the last decade or this decade i would say this decade has just started of course the last decade might be the more appropriate word the advantages the challenges the legal issues and the summary as we go by i think uh, in the entire medical history there are three phases of healthcare revolutions the first revolution started between 1850 to 1960 when antibiotics and understanding of the physiology and anatomy of the human body has helped to revolutionize the medical healthcare then the second healthcare revolution occurred between 1960 to 2000 where not only the medicines and drugs the stents the transplants and most importantly in psychiatry the randomized clinical trials has given the beautiful molecules which we practice which help our hundreds of our patients world over the search has always been on up to 
last century, we have gone through a lot of these instruments, finally coming to the modified ECT today. The search for the mental health technologies has always been there. But the new wave of change, I would call it a third revolution, is just started. And that is essentially the most of this decade. The last decade and this decade. The new technologies in mental health actually start from the simplest of simple has three components. Day-to-day -day recording. It can be electronic. You use the internet-based devices, questionnaires, and a lot of other things. Transmitting the same information and watching the progress, intervening, and research into the new mental health technology and observing that the revolution is, seems to be going on. But I would think world over, the smartphone, as you can see here, and also in this slide, in this cartoon, for the past two decades has changed our lives. It practically records a lot of medical events, your heart rate, your ECG, your exercising, your sleeping, your REM, a lot of other things which go in the recording of your simple mental health basis. The mental health technology, to say very simply, is now threefold. One is the wearable devices, of which I think I'll delve one or two, but handmade, hand woven smartphones or smart watches, you might say, and mobile phone, which you can keep it in the your pocket, or a little bigger ones, the iPads. These three actually contributes to 80% of our mental health technology. There are other wearable devices, for example, can be used in ADHD, quite a lot of use in the geriatric psychiatry, in child psychiatry, even in neural psychiatry, we use it quite regularly. The mental health technology has opened up a new frontier, I must say. It not only involves usage of patient-related data, but transmission of mental health data collection a new tech study, which I'm doing right now, is using a wearable device to see that the patients complain, the schizophrenia patients complain in the antipsychotics. This is an ongoing study going on for the last two years. Hopefully in the next conference in Lahore, the International Psychiatric Conference in Pakistan, I would be able to present the data. It's a long-term study, multi-centric study, which I have initiated. The mobile devices like cell phones, Smartphones, wearable watches, and smart watches, you can say, are probably the ones which have taken over from a clinician to the patient. And both the patient and the clinician, the doctors, the researchers, and everyone can access both the help and monitor. And from the doctor's side, we monitor the progress and the improvement or decrement of the illness. Simply saying, understanding the mental wealth. The mental health technology may be good first step for those who have avoided mental health care in the past. This is easily available to everyone, quite cheap. It is used by each one of them. And as you see in this wonderful cotton, most of the people love it. Some might have a little problems initially. Mental health technology, in fact, sometimes puts out a kind of a big question to us. Is the technology moving very fast, too fast for us? The questions obviously are twofold. What is the utility? What is the evidence? And are we running with the crowd without actually having a good control on the mental health technology? I would like to answer some of these questions in my next part of the presentation. I think the first important thing in the mental health is the expanding use of mobile health technology is so unprecedented, especially in psychiatry and also in the medicine. Every month, companies out of companies and researchers start giving smart apps and these start smart apps actually are adding a lot of confusion. Well, psychiatry has never been an exception to this. There has been a growing patient 
usage by these apps. A lot of clinical work is being done, both in the government and private sector. And a lot of these apps are cheap or free. And mental health technology for psychiatric clinical care has definitely changed our lives. To start with, it's quite simple. Mobile mental health support can be very effective, as given in my first story. New technology can also be packaged in extremely sophisticated app, which can be downloaded many a times free. Some of them are to be bought. Such apps might have the device built in sensors to collect information of users' typical behaviors by using appropriate sensors. Now, the fall sensors, the movement sensors, your heart rate recorders, your ECG recorders, and you, you keep recording your body weight and your eating habits all as a data entry. I think including the patient takes a tablet and presses a button. We know that the patient has taken. There are a lot of ifs and buts on that, but definitely app detects a change in behavior and it may provide a signal. The apps and utility in mental health, some apps are standalone programs. For example, for CBT in depression, we have a special apps. For geriatric psychiatry, there are a few specialized apps. Like ADHD apps are available. Autistic apps are for used in autistic spectrum disorder is available. Counselors and the psychologists can do a proper psychological assessment by using the apps as well. Now, there's a very little industry regulation that is the flip side of it. And very little information on the effectiveness of the app is probably our Achilles tendon knee. Apps in mental health, literally thousands to lakhs apps, and some might not have a lot of utility. But of course, the evidence of benefits is the one which is between the patient and the carers, all the mental health professionals. I'm trying to give a very brief platform of apps names, for example, for cognitive disorders in dementia, uh, in Parkinson's, pocket cards, which are useful, geriatrics, at your fingertips, caregiver's touch, and I can go on and on, but the list is so vast, and but suffice for me to say that there's a lot of benefits going on. In fact, a few iPhone-based or Android-based uh, Epicrates, Medscapes, Parental Toolbox, or Socialize, and even marriage counseling is being practiced by using this technology. And uh, the initial reports of the last two decades do suggest some definite positive impact, cost-effective, and the advantage is obviously if you're looking for the new mental health technology, reach is probably the first advantage, the convenience. You can do at your own time. Treatment can take place at anywhere, at your home, in the middle of the night, or in a bus, or at your work. Maybe anywhere it's ideal for you for to understand your trouble is in person. And there will be sufficient sensors which would help the carers at the end point to monitor if there is a need to be. The other advantages are one, anonymity. You can work from any place and client can seek treatment options without involving other people. So the privacy can be well maintained. The cost is now coming to a much, much lower. As you can see here, because the same smartphone or a smart watch you're wearing, which can be initially costly, the rest of the cost might be quite cheap. And the service, it's a kind of a service to more people at the same time. You can reach to literally millions of people around. Technology is available. Only the people who need it would use it. It is also used in the mass tragedies. For example, let us say an earthquake. What is the psychological impact? What is the pandemic impact on this? All these things can be measured by using the new mental health technology. And some of the technology might be more apt and useful. And sometimes it is different from the traditional way we, we diagnose, but this would also encourage our clients to continue therapy wherever they are. Right now, thanks to the telepsychiatry, which is born out of the new mental health technology, across the world, each one of us are treating our patients. And most important, it is a service all the time.
24 hour service technology can provide and very rarely it goes out of the hand except when internet is not there or the transmission might be affected but monitoring is continuous except taking care of charging your smartphones or the battery and finally an objective data collection is definitely guaranteed because the transmission occurs on a minute to minute base all the time and technology can quantitatively collect information such as location the movement of the individual the phone use and other information and a lot of other things which can be collected over the time most important the simplicity just wear it on your hand as you can see in this cartoon your heart rate is recorded i'm just showing this as a heart rate but in the mental health technology lot of simple things you can use the app for example ph9 can be me measured within a minute and half you just need to answer on your smartphone so the simplicity is there and coming to the effectiveness the biggest concern for us is whether the technical technological interventions in obtaining the scientific evidence that they work and they work as well as the traditional methods there is a big question but effectiveness data is just coming out and finally most of the apps have a privacy within and this is this is probably one area which needs to be monitored and controlled by each government the government of india itself has formed right now the new it act of 2020 which gives lot of control on taking the human rights which is very important in the mental health and the use utility apps deal with very sensitive personal information we all know so if you sleep also your sleep can be recorded by this app but the guarantee to privacy for app users is the most and our government in this country and i'm sure in pakistan also it is being there are definite difficulties initially each country would face especially the regulations of the millions of apps and the question of what should who should regulate what in the mental health technology and the data it generates how is it controlled because it is in public domain well this is a real question which need takes time for to be answered but let us come to the day to day application to the clinic of ours in the day to day life i mean a cartoon would start the doctor is logged in am i logged in to our computerized therapies the future i think the the answer is going to be definitely yes there are a lot of self management apps which have developed over the time which would be useful in the mental health technology both in depression anxiety disorders phobic disorders and behavioral and psychological symptoms including cognitive remediation can be taught by using this technique some software can use additional equipment to track additionally for example we have sensors for rating heart rate uh, blood pressure and the breathing patterns which can be an indirect guidance of the anxiety behavior the sleep problems can be well monitored by just giving uh, that app specially which should record for one week we have a large large information from seeing the data from the smart watch which the patient wears and sleeps instead of asking so many questions we are getting a lot of clear answers apps to improve the cognitive remediation are well established by this time and this is being increasingly used for multiple applications including in significant mood disorders especially depression and bipolar disorders skill training apps are the new area which has come in the last 5 years in which based on this it can be a educational video about anxiety management and importance or management of phobia disorders or a social anxiety disorders management ocd behavior therapy management in each of these components the health apps have taught us our patients at least quite a lot quite a lot of internet based support groups are now being formed and this can be across the countries so like india and pakistan can have a lot of patient groups in which both it will be helpful for the patients and also data would be there for research many people initially who are not comfortable with this technology it takes a little time for learning but by regular meetings and group therapies 
both for carers of schizophrenia, carers of uh, behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia. I think internet-based support groups are now formed across the world, and now cross-country support systems are also formed. The psychiatry in India, as I told you, the Personal Data Protection Bill was passed in 2020. Now, telepsychiatry in India need to take care of legal issues, which right now, right now we would say in infancy, but the law is there well entrenched. The leading psychiatric temples of learning across the country, uh, both in Pakistan and India, use teleconsultations. And thankfully, because of the pandemic, Nimhans, uh, Bangalore and Ames, Delhi, and few thousand psychiatrists across our countries, both the countries, are daily, regularly using telepsychiatry. Legally also, in India, the telepsychiatry is, uh, telemedicine is legalized and rules need to be formed. Telemental health issues, there are some issues, but telepsychiatry diagnosis and counseling and telepsychiatry using as psychotherapy and in addition, app-based internet portals are used both via phone and video phone. And the easiest to be used is the WhatsApp-based video calls. All these things have changed the daily mental health practice across the globe, more so in, in our subcontinent. The emotion tracking app, or there are lots of apps which can check the bipolar. There's one simple app called Bipol, which would actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, a patient would need just one minute to monitor the last 24 hours. Likewise, Muse. Muse is a headband designed to sense the electrical rhythms of the brain. So there are this simple technology which is coming in the last five, six years, which can be useful both in terms of health, mental health delivery systems and also tracking. There are varieties of apps which have come, which are now ingrained part of the smartwatch programs and this would help in the designation. Small wearable devices are again useful, like there's another small uh, wearable device called Think, as I shown in this blue one. And the forehead designed to stimulate nerves. So this is used for therapy in a variety of conditions, including tension headaches and other so on. It's in, now we are talking not only of the illness, but we are also talking about the positive well-being. So the, the Spire is one more app which wants the user and the stress levels are going up. He wears it, so it would actually indicate to the user that he has crossed his own limit. The one more area I would think, which is increasingly the new mental health technology is being used in the dementia care. The PSS COG rehab software can be incorporated in your computer or in your iPad and the patient can use now, I will briefly come to, before I conclude, the evidence and proof of the concept. The, one of the important studies done in 2016 by May et al., a study done in Duke University found that the day technology used at risk adolescents experienced less number of ADHD symptoms compared to the technology. On the flip side, the study also found that some did experience depression and anxiety at times when they don't use the technology. There are multiple studies across the world. The Michigan study found that the Facebook use led to a decrease in the happiness and overall life satisfaction. A warning clearly that our social media should be used very carefully. Australian researchers conducted two studies and found that the compulsive internet use, which is again a new iatrogenic disorders of the technology, can be helpful because of the mental health technology. And in Sweden, in Swansea University, everywhere, the psychological symptoms and withdrawal. We need to move a bit fast with the mental technology. One of the most important problem has been that we need to watch clearly. You like it or not, you move fast. And the closing, I think the mental health technology comes to stay. We need to live with them. We need to live, learn with the patient. But definitely there are lots of benefits, but the flip side, we need to watch for the adverse events. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's once again a great pleasure to be part of this wonderful international psychiatric conference at Lahore. 
although I wait. I am there to answer some of your questions at the end of the session. And thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. I thank Professor Afzal Javed.